I fully admit that when I first got my hands on Zobak, the Clockwork City, I asked myself, why does this book even exist? Because there is already such a huge amount of information about Zobak and the surrounding area scattered across all kinds of different products and books by Cobalt Press. But then I realized that's actually the problem because as a reviewer, I tend to forget that not everybody has all of the books by Cobalt Press on their shelf and I get them for free. Meaning that having a book that combines all of that stuff you can find in different books from Cobalt Press, slaps it into one book and adds some pretty cool new stuff and rearranges everything for easy reference is actually pretty damn cool. Hi there fellow role players and game masters, my name is Mr. Tarask and this is still your go-to YouTube channel for anything Cobalt Press and today I want to talk about Zobag, the Clockwork City. The book. Not like the city per se itself, but the book talking about the city. Anyway, Zobek the Clockwork City is a book about Zobek the Clockwork City that put, takes everything from Zobek the Clockwork City that Cobalt Press has and slaps it into one book and adds some pretty damn cool new stuff to it. So what I want to do in this video is kind of two things. First, uh, no, second, I want to uh, open a PDF and flip through the PDF real quickly and show you a few things that I really like about this book. Uh, but before I do that, I want to quickly talk about like what you actually get from this book and why it is a really good buy, why it could be a really good buy for some people but not necessarily for another group of people now I'm going to go straight to business here. The book is pretty damn good. It takes a lot of the writing we already saw in other books. For example, the Midgard a World book has an incredible big part about Zobek. And they take some of that writing, literally copy paste it uh, in here. Some they rewrite a little bit. Some they split in two and only have the first half of that section from the World book in here. And then the other half a little bit later in this book. Uh, tying it together with other parts from other books. Making it more... Uh, make more sense in the long run when you are reading the Clockwork City book. Now, um, having all of that together in one book and only having to flip through one book is really convenient and this is the ultimate city guide when it comes to Zobek. If you buy one book for your urban adventuring in the Midgard campaign setting or any campaign setting that you want to play Sobag in because Sobag is a standalone city that you can place anywhere. This one is absolutely it. So what do you get for your 50 hard earned US dollars if you buy the Zobag Clockwork City book. I'm gonna read from the back real quickly and kind of talk about what my opinion is of those points they talk about right here because I have been reading this very thoroughly and I know a little, quite a bit about Zobag so I think I have a good understanding of what all this is. Let's give you the tour. Descriptions of Zobag's adventures, adventure ready locales from the bustling dock district to the notorious Cobalt Ghetto. Yes, all of the districts we know and all of the places we know from uh, uh, this book. Oh, that is so freaking heavy. This book are all in here, but there is also districts in here from the Warlock Grimoire series. Some from other like Midgard Sagas books. Uh, there is a bunch of that stuff like they talk about in Midgard Saga is also in here. So all of that stuff is in here. Like, for example, like the Undercity. Uh, uh, is one of my favorite parts and the black market is one of my favorite parts uh, from Zobag and actually the black they go really deep into the black market in this thing and I absolutely love it because they have an NPC that does some really crazy and cool stuff in here that I absolutely love talking about NPCs a slew of NPCs from <clears throat> influential guilds infamous gangs and ambitious scholars ready to challenge or aid player characters now this is really cool because in the back of this book is like a kind of like a beast cherry which has like a bunch of uh, uh beasts or whatever whatever it is like um stat blocks of beasts there's magic items in here what you expect from an appendix but in the middle of the book they talk about npcs and these are not just like your random monsters you will encounter in this city no these are like npcs that actually they talk about in the book for example a gang leader or gang members or uh, uh, an important political figure that might turn against the characters. They are all statted out. They all have a bit of lore. They all have a bit of like how you roleplay them. They are all in there statted out. And like they say, if you stat it out, you can kill it, right? So uh, it's pretty damn cool that they have that in the middle of the book. 
uh, a new clockwork, arcane tradition, and magic items like the bag of traps and the chromancer's pocket clock and all of that crap. New character backgrounds, mounts, and feats specifically for humans and Gearforged, which I think is really cool because Gearforged, uh, it is, after all, Zobak, the clockwork city, and the O is little gear, right? So Gearforged are a really important aspect about Zobak, the clockwork city, because clockwork creatures are just a big thing there. Uh, for example, um, the guards, like almost all of the guards in Zobek are clockwork creatures, right? So that's basically what's going on. Uh, what did I say? Oh, and 14 new adventures, sorry, 14 adventures ranging from 1st to 11th level, perfect as a standalone quests or played in a sequence as a campaign. Now, some of these are not new, I think, but like I said, they're all scattered across different places and different books and different websites and stuff that having them together here is really cool and some of them are really funny now they say that you can play them uh, as standalone quests that's perfectly possible and then as a in sequence as a campaign i'm not really seeing an interesting overarching storyline here except for your players really getting to know the dark and gritty places and people of Sobek, which can be interesting in and itself. Like, but for me, it's a bunch of standalone quests and one very lively um, city that's very well uh, fleshed out. So yeah, um, this expanded edition combines Zobek Gazetteer and the streets of Sobek, enhanced with content from Warlock and Warlock Lairs, 30 brand new maps, two new adventures, and much, much more. That is basically what Zobek the Clockwork City is exactly and before we dig into the pdf of this thing i just want to really quickly show you that they have the map of zobek in the back somewhere in the back somewhere in the back in the back right here and they have a flippity flappity fold out mappity thingy right here which you have to like cut out with a scissors if you want to hand it to your players scissors not a scissors just scissors and here it is, ladies and gentlemen, the PDF of the Clockwork City, namely Zobek, 305 pages thick PDF um, that I want to not fully go into like always, but I just want to kind of like show you a few things that are cool. And I want to start off with the um, table of contents, because for me, the table of contents kind of has two main parts. And this book for me also has two main parts. First of all, you have like the lore chapters one all the way up to chapter six let's say it is the lore the politics the locations the plot hooks if you want plot hooks like the proper uh campaign setting campaign building world building writing from cobalt press that we all know and love and it really builds the city it really makes the city feel like a living and breathing city with politics and there is this party that that aids this party and this party that aids this party and there's this going on in the black market and then there's that going on in that other district and there's a library all of that stuff is like chapters one but also about of course like guts cults relics uh gangs uh guilds um all of that stuff then chapters uh seven not eight and nine are for me more like the gameplay stuff like there's a chapter on magic talk about ma about magic in and out in and around uh zobek but also the uh school of clockwork or whatever they want to call it the clockwork divine uh, uh arcane tradition or whatever uh the clockwork mage basically subclass is basically in there uh there's heroes of zobek where they get uh, give us some new backgrounds some new mounts really cool uh and some racial feats for our uh, gearforge and human and then there are 14 adventures uh spanning from levels one all the way up to a level 11 that you can play at your liking or whatever uh that i will be talking about one of them namely a drinking problem because that name really stood out to me and just to give you kind of an idea of what these adventures can be now, like I said earlier in the video, if you already know a lot about Zobek because you've been a Cobalt Press fan for long, you have a lot of the books and you've been reading about Cobalt Press on accident here and there in different books, then you're not going to find a lot of new stuff in the first chapters of this book and all across the book, basically. Uh, you're going to find new stuff. There's a bunch of new stuff in here, uh, but also a bunch of stuff you're going to read and it's going to read very familiar for you, especially 
when it comes to like an overview of the city for 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 example here the citadel district uh some of these districts are literally copy pasted from the world book which is not a bad thing at all uh but for example the world book has a much longer part about uh let's for example take i don't know the citadel district has a bigger part in the world book um and they just cut that in half or, or a third or whatever and put that right here in the overview section. And But all of that other stuff is also in this book. So don't worry about that. It's also in this book, but it's just more conveniently placed in other sections of the book. So uh, when this goes more into like why the Citadel District is, for example, just I'm just spitballing here. This might not be accurate by why, for example, it might be an important district for politics or whatever. They talk about that part of the district in the politics section. That is basically how they do it. They kind of rearranged a lot of stuff. Also, I really like the gear icons everywhere here. It's just really cool. So that is... Um, I'm not going to go too deep into this section of the book because it's like this is reading material that you either hate or love. There's not a lot of gameplay stuff in here, but there's a lot of like that vibe you get from Cobalt Press when you read like one section. It's enough to read like this section about the Spring Festival. Yeah, they have an entire section, by the way, on festivals and fairs, which is really cool. So if you talk about, if you read about the Spring Festival, you already get like, a Game Master already gets like a thousand IDs to run an adventure or at least a encounter during the Spring Festival. And then there's backgrounds of which I one I really really like, which is the Blast of Nikash, which has a feature Blast at the Bar. You feel more at home while in tavern or inns than you do in your own home. Uh, determine with your game master name and location of your favorite tavern, what city is it in, blah 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 blah. You visit that at pub every day and know all the regulars. Because of your famed Bruce, 50% of all other taverns in the city also know your name. So, when you are in a tavern that knows your identity and knows your fame, its bartender will give you and your companions free meals and lodging as long as you spend 4 hours brewing and succeed on a DC 15 intelligence check to make them a barrel of your favorite brew. Additionally, while in this tavern, you can call upon its patrons, patrons for assistance provided the assistance you ask does not risk their lives and you remain in good standing with the tavern's patrons. I love this. You're a drunk dwarf who brews a good beer. You're known everywhere across city and maybe even like neighboring cities. If you like really play this out with your game master and your game master spends some time with you uh, doing this type of stuff, brewing and, and making sure you get free meals, your name might even spread to other cities, which is really cool, which I think is a really cool feature uh, for. So another background, Collegian, Coll Coll Collegian or whatever, Cordeson, uh, there is a Cobalt King in here, there is a Politician in here, so some really cool stuff. And then there is also Mounts, which I really like because the Clockwork City, Zobek has um griffin riders the griffin riders reside in a place in uh, in the city in a tower where there are a few griffins who are taking care of like horses with a lot of love by groomers and feeders and people all of that stuff and they all have like one rider and the riders function kind of as scouts and semi guards of the city they fly over uh the, the forests and the mountains uh, looking to see if there's raids coming and all that stuff it's really a prestigious job that is really important for the city of Zobek so having flying mounts is really cool so a giant fey owl for example is really cool to have uh, you are of course there is uh, 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 stuff about riding a griffin uh, yeah so there's an entire part about that in this book which I think is really cool there's new racial feats for the gear forged and there are new racial feats for the uh, human which I'm actually more interested in because although I love gear forged I love them as NPCs I love them as like having that gear forged character talking to a party of flesh and blood characters I don't like to myself play gear forged uh, I like to role playing them as a game master, but I don't like to play them. So um, let me see. Uh, Septime Warmonger must be chosen the first level by a human of the seven cities. Uh, you were raised in the seven cities where endless war is way of life. Even the relative peace for blah, 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 you have advantage on initiative rolls. Whenever you roll initiative, you gain temporary hit points equal to the number of creatures below you in initiative. Oh, that's oh, that's a really cool. 
I didn't see that. That's a really cool um, mechanic. You gain temporary hit points equal to the number of creatures below you in initiative. Wow, so if you're fighting like one dragon and you have three party members and you're first in initiative, then you have like four temporary hit points. But if you're fighting like a band of 17 orcs, you have 20 temporary hit points. Like it's not the number of spots below you. So like even if the game master groups like 17 orcs together, it says number of creatures. It doesn't say number of spots in initiative order. So yeah, really absolutely like that then there's a section called the streets which are the 11 sorry the 14 adventures of which two if i'm not mistaken are a pretty new uh fully new for this book and let's talk about one of them this is a drinking problem a fourth level adventure and i want to just quickly go over this to show you what these adventures <coughs> are kind of about and what to expect from these adventures now most of these adventures are a little bit too long to be one shots and a little bit too short to be like short form adventures with short form adventures i mean adventures Adventures like whatever short form adventures that take you like four or five sessions but aren't like really full campaigns so these are a little bit in between this these will take you one two sometimes maybe even three uh, uh, sessions depending on what your players do or how long they mess around or um, how long your sessions are of course now this is a really funny and cool little adventure but there is a big disclaimer here so the rum gremlin is basically there is this tavern who is infested by, uh, which is infested by rum gremlins. Rum gra gra gremlins uh, drink all the rum, they drink all the beer, they drink all the alcohol, and they have a bad breath, making everybody feel like they have a hangover. So the bartender has a hangover, the mate has a hangover, whoever ever comes into the tavern has a freaking hangover, as feeling like shit. So the rum gremlin, in order to play this adventure, you need the rum gremlin uh, stat block. That is in the Tome of Beasts. They say it in the adventure, it is in the Tome of Beasts. Look it up. So you kind of need the Tome of Beasts for this adventure. Not only that, and this is something, is a little mistake even in the PDF that I have, um, because later in this adventure, they talk about a Clurich one, a Clurich one, and they also say right here, see Tome of Beasts. But <clears throat> the Clurich one is actually in the Tome of Beasts one. And as you know, there is a difference between the Tome of Beasts and the Tome of Beasts one. If you don't know the difference, uh, long story short, this was the first Tome of Beasts ever written, and then they wrote a bunch of new ones, and uh, like the two and the three and the and and, and the other one, uh, which is the Creature Codex, and then they went back to the first Tome of Beasts and made a new version of that, which is now called the Tome of Beasts one, which has a few new creatures, including the Clurech one. So in order to like fully play this. Um, the way it is written, now of course a good game master will find a stat block, a suitable stat block for anything uh, for this adventure. But in order to play that, you actually need the Tome of Beasts 1 and you need the Tome of Beasts uh, 1. The first Tome of Beasts, yeah. Weird, but cool. So basically, it is up to the players to get rid of these uh, rum gremlins, uh, which are cool. They get drunk, they mess around, they, yeah, and they need to get rid of that. And in order to do so, they need to go and get a, um, one of those Clurich ones, who in the words of um, Cobalt Press are uh, leprechauns, fey, who gave up the life of being a leprechaun or something like that. And they really hate rum gremlins like they have a innate hate about rum gremlins so it's up to the players to go and get them first of course they, they don't want to go and then the players are like yeah but the, the, the inn wants you as a resident of the inn so you can drink as much as you want after you get rid of the uh, rum gremlins and all of that stuff and it is a very funny short adventure that leads the players outside of the tavern going to look for this leprechaun fey uh then trying to convince them the leprechaun fey invites them for no they he, he actually challenges the players for a drinking game because only then he can he has the trust he gives his trust to the players the players don't need to win the drinking game they just need to do the drinking game right so when they do the drinking game he goes back they defeat the rum gremlins and uh the leprechaun gets to stay at the inn forever and ever and ever which is really cool because now you have an npc that can uh talk to the players every now and then you have like this connection in an inn uh, that is on your side, 
which is a really cool short form adventure. I think this would take you like uh, two sessions, maybe even three sessions, depending on uh, what your players do. And the book is actually full of these kinds of adventures. Some are a bit longer, some are a bit shorter, but all of them are Cobalt Press material, so they're great. Until next video, bye-bye.